Well, I need to apologize ahead of time because today's show is really gonna suck. Well, today we're going to have ourselves an old-fashioned shootout, taking a look at some of the popular cyclone separators on the market. Now, separators have been around for a while, and I remember when I first started woodworking, seeing plans for them to make your own, uh, just using basic materials from the home store. Uh, but these days, it seems like a lot of the dust collection companies are getting in the game, and even Rockler has a unit uh, that's fairly inexpensive, so sometimes you just have to uh, weigh the cost versus the amount of time you would spend building it. So all of these units, I'll tell you straight off, are certainly capable and they do the job, but there is one clear winner, and we'll find out which one it is. Now, the review that I'm going to do on these, you know how I am with reviews. I'm not a professional reviewer. I'm just some dude in a garage who likes to play with tools and, and give his opinion on them. So I'm going to give you a very empirical results. We're not really going to measure anything. We're not really going to weigh anything. I don't have a dust meter that's going to detect how much dust makes it into the environment. I just don't have those capabilities. But I can give you my opinion and show you some things so that you can make a judgment call for yourself. So before we get started, let's talk a little bit about what these units are, what they do, and why you would want one in the first place. Now, even though all of these systems may look different, they all operate on the same principle. Essentially, they're the middleman. They go between the dust extractor and the tool. So this way, as you're pulling the dust in, the wood chips are coming in, this is another layer of filtration that's separating out the dust fine and, uh, and the coarse dust as well before it even gets to the dust extractor so that what actually gets to the dust extractor is very minimal. Now, why would you want to do that? Because, I mean, it seems like this should be doing everything we need it to do. And in most cases, it does, but there's a couple things to think about. Number one is safety. The more we can separate out before it even gets to the dust extractor, the less chance there is that that stuff is going to build up and wind up exhausting out into the shop. And it also extends the life of the tool because that fine dust tends to get everywhere. Uh, and especially if you let it build up on the pleated filters and things, uh, sometimes it just winds up burning out the motor. I've lost more than one shop vac that way before I learned my lesson and started buying the actual filter bags, which is the second point. Filter bags are expensive, and it's something that as long as you're a woodworker, you're going to have to continue buying those things. Well, this is one way to avoid that, because all this stuff is being separated out first. It's going to take a really long time before you fill a bag in one of these, because you're going to continuously empty this container and never really have to worry about it. I don't want to say never, but you won't have to worry about it nearly as often, and you won't go through nearly as many of those disposable bags. Now, interestingly enough, uh, specifically, Festool offers a solution to this, and it's something that I, I bought into a while ago, and that's a lifetime bag. Basically, this is reusable, so I can empty it out, and it saves me from having to buy the disposables. But here's the problem. This costs $200. None of these systems we're looking at today cost that much money. So if you're looking at it purely from a financial perspective, it makes a lot more sense to do something like one of these cyclones than it does to go with a lifetime bag. All right, so just a few things to think about. The Oneida Dust Deputy retails for $79, and that's for what they call their deluxe kit. It contains the buckets, of course you got the Cyclone here, pretty much everything you need to get started. Now, you can buy the Cyclone independently if you wanted to make your own custom solution, and you can also buy some of their higher-end units for more industrial applications, and also one that specifically attaches to a Festool dust extractor. And for $10 more, at $89, you can get the Rockler Dustrite Vortex. Uh, this is something that you actually can get on sale quite often, so you could save 15 or 20 bucks on it, uh, but the regular retail price is $89.99. And now the most expensive unit in our shootout is the Clearview Mini CV06. Retails for $149. We'll have to see if it's worth that price tag. Now let's talk about connectivity. That's really important because you want to know that when you get this thing home, you're going to be able just to put it together and go to work, and you don't necessarily want to have to worry about uh, cobbling together ports and making all your hoses fit properly. Now, the good news is, across the board, every one of the units has no problem connecting using the hose that it comes with, and that basically connects to the Cyclone unit and into your dust extractor or shop vac. All of those connections were absolutely perfect. Where things are a little bit more variable is with the hose that connects to your tools. So first, let's look at the rigid shop vac. No problem at all. Slide right on and it catches because there's a little bit of a taper at the back of this port and you get a nice friction fit there so no problem with the shop vac 
my Festool stuff. Now I have two hoses that I'm concerned about. Uh, and this may not be the same for everyone's situation, even if you have the Festool gear, because they do make different sized hoses. But this larger hose that's part of my boom arm setup, this actually connects perfectly. In fact, you push it just far enough and you'll feel it snap. So that's a perfect connection, very happy with that. The one I'm a little bit concerned about is my 36 millimeter connection. This is the hose I use for my Capex. This guy slides on and it bottoms out inside the hose here and that's not really a good connection. So even using some of the things that Oneida includes in the kit to help you tighten up a loosened hose, it's not really gonna do anything. So I'm gonna have to cobble together a solution for that. Um, but other than that, everything works good. Looks like just a 36 millimeter hose is a problem. Now the Clearview CV06, no problem with the larger Festool hose. No problem here with the 36 millimeter hose. And here's the rigid shop vac hose. No problem there at all. So all three of them work perfectly fine. So now the Dust Right Vortex, looks like the larger Festool hose, no problem. 36 millimeter hose, no problem there either. And our rigid shop vac hose, no problem. So this one is pretty much a tie between the Dust Right Vortex and the Mini CV06. Now another really important factor here is portability. Our dust extractors and shop vacs are already big enough as it is, and now we have this secondary thing that we're pulling alongside of it. So some people cobble together a custom solution where uh, both the vacuum and this are sitting on a cart and you can push that around, or you can consider some of the solutions that the manufacturers provide for us. Number one is casters. The Oneida unit actually does come with casters, but you have to drill through the bucket and attach it with the nuts to sort of make that system work. Cool thing about the Dust Right Vortex is there's already holes there for the casters that it comes with. You just pop them in and it's ready to go. Uh, unfortunately, the Clearview unit does not come with casters and you would have to go for a completely custom solution if you want that one to roll around uh, with the actual dust extractor unit. Uh, but the Mini does have a different sort of thought process. Instead of having it roll around, uh, they're thinking that you're going to essentially attach it to your dust extractor. So it includes hardware and a sort of connection kit to allow you to connect it permanently. And then this way you're moving your dust extractor or your shop vac with this uh, cyclone collector as one unit. Uh, the Oneida system also comes with the hardware for connectivity. So really when it comes down to it, if you want rolling options built in, you're gonna be looking at either the Oneida or the Dust Right Vortex. And if you want attachment options, you're gonna be looking at either the Oneida or the uh, CV06 from Clearview. And really because it has both options, I think the Oneida is gonna be the winner in this category. Now let's take a look at the overall build quality of these units, and we'll start with the Dust Right Vortex. It's all plastic construction. There's really nothing to complain about. I mean, it's, it's fairly durable plastic. I think this thing would take a beating pretty well. Uh, the casters on it, they're kind of cheap, but I mean, really, I wouldn't expect them to be super high quality casters, and I don't really think that they need to be. This thing isn't going to have a whole lot of weight to it, um, so that's really not too much of an issue. But overall, a really well-built unit. The only complaint that I have about this one is the hose. The hose is that sort of permanent flex crap, and it's a, a fairly rigid plastic. And this is something that if this hose were stepped on, you would kink it and uh, you could possibly split it and break it. Uh, so it's not the most durable hose in the world. It certainly gets the job done. And if you have a setup where this is somehow immobilized uh, with reference to your actual dust collector, it may not be an issue because nothing will ever move. But if you are rolling this thing around, you're gonna have this moving constantly. So this is just not my favorite hose material, but otherwise a pretty well-built unit. Now the Clearview CV06, at first glance, I thought was the best of all three in terms of durability. It's got nice thick plastic for the Cyclone unit at the top. It's not real high, so there's not as much of a tip risk. It's a fairly low profile Cyclone. The lid is great. It's a twist on lid that has a nice little locking mechanism and it kind of makes that ratcheting noise. And that lets you know that you're tightening it up and it's very clear and obvious when the lid is fully seated. So there's no question there at all. Uh, something some people might be concerned about is the fact that the hardware that holds the cyclone to the lid is nylon hardware instead of actual, you know, metal bolts uh, and nuts there. Um, for something like this, I don't know how much of a concern that is, but I figured I would bring it up. Now, the one thing 
that just really, really disappointed me with this was as I was using this unit, it wound up buckling in. So the, the actual bucket itself sucked in because the pressure was too great. Now, I'm not 100% sure exactly why it happened. Could just be a defect in this particular bucket, but that was a bad thing. Um, so we'll see it later when we do the performance test. You'll actually see what it looks like. But uh, I was really disappointed because everything else about this unit is really top-notch quality. So, yeah, it is what it is. Now, the Dust Deputy, honestly, there's really nothing overly remarkable about it to say that its quality is any better than the other two. It's all plastic. You got a plastic bin here, plastic cyclone, and I can't really tell you what the difference between this plastic versus the other two types of plastic, but it certainly looks durable enough for the job. I will say that there is metal hardware on this instead of nylon, so there's a plus. Uh, the only thing that I think I could really you know, consider a negative about the overall build quality is the lid. Uh, what I really like about the other two units, both the Dustrite Vortex and the CV06, is they both have a twist on lid. So you really know when that sucker is on there, there's no debating it at all, and it's actually not going to pop off, even if you lift up from, you know, the lid and the Cyclone unit itself which of course the instructions are gonna tell you not to do that, but how many of you are gonna do it? You're gonna to try to move this thing at one point, uh, even if you just forget that you're not supposed to do it, and you're gonna wind up pulling this lid right off and you could very well get all of that dust you know, thrown onto your floor. So that's definitely something to consider. So when I look at all three of these, they all have some sort of flaw that I'm not completely happy with. Uh, so you might say it's a three-way tie, but the fact that the bucket on the CV06 collapsed on me I really got to take a few more points off for that. So I'm going to say this one is a two-way tie between the Dust Right Vortex and the Dust Deputy. Now the final attribute that we're going to test today is performance. And really, this is the most important thing. We want to know how much dust is caught by the cyclone separator and how much makes it through into our dust extractor. Now normally in my dust extractor, I use a bag to collect the fine dust. In this case, I'm gonna remove the bag, clean out the compartment, and then we'll be able to actually see how much dust makes it into that plastic compartment. Uh, we won't necessarily be weighing it or doing any sort of real scientific measurement. We'll just look at it and just kind of compare between the three units to see if one has more dust than another. Uh, the other thing is, how am I gonna make the dust? Well, I've got a soft maple board here, just leftover scrap from the workbench project, and I'm gonna use my Festool Rotex sander. And in Rotex mode, this thing can chew up some serious material. All right, so I'm gonna run that for five minutes straight for each one of the units to produce a decent amount of dust. Then I'm gonna go over and make three cuts at my sliding compound miter saw, which also generates a lot of dust, but it's a little bit larger in terms of the actual size of the dust particles. Uh, so this way we'll have a nice mix and hopefully enough material that we can get a good judge of how well these things are working. So let's get started. So let's see how we did with the dust deputy. Well, there really isn't a whole lot of accumulation here. Just got that little bit right there. So that's, uh, that's really pretty darn good. And inside the can, and that's where all the dust went. And you can see we've got the mixture of larger dust particles and the smaller dust particles are in there as well. So let's see how much dust made it through the Mini CV06. Well, you can see we've got quite a bit more buildup here that made it through the Cyclone and into the actual dust bin of our dust collector. Quite a bit more. Now let's take a look inside the can, but before we do that, one interesting thing here that was kind of unexpected was the can on the CV06 just collapsed under the uh, pressure from the vac. So take that for what it is, but that actually may be making it difficult to get this lid off until we get it back to shape here. And of course, quite a bit of dust in there, but uh, this collapsing here, that's, that's kind of a problem. And now we're gonna look at the results from the dust right vortex. And as you can see, pretty good accumulation of small dust in here. And let's take a look at the bin. No real surprises here. Pretty good accumulation inside, you can see that. So let's start the elimination ceremony. Dust right vortex, you are well built, reasonably priced, you have a high capacity, but uh, unfortunately, you're just a little pitchy dog. CV06, you're attractive, no doubt about it, but you're a little bit expensive for my taste. I'm gonna have to let you go. Dust Deputy, at $79, you were the cheapest unit in our entire test here. One might think of you initially as the underdog, but your performance speaks for itself. You're going to Hollywood. 
Now, in all seriousness, if you're in the market for a cyclone separator, any one of these will get the job done. But if you really want to get the best and the best buy for your money, the choice is kind of clear because in this case, which is kind of odd when you look at shootouts like this, um, the cheapest one was the highest performing one. The dust deputy, without a doubt, was better at separating the fine dust and making sure that fewer dust particles got to the dust extractor. Both of these units were comparable in terms of performance, um, but you know the Clearview unit is 150 bucks. You're looking at 89 retail for the Vortex. So even between these two, I would say the Vortex is probably the better buy, especially when this sucker is on sale and you can get it for like 65 bucks. Um, unfortunately, I, I love Clearview. I own one of their Cyclones. It's an absolutely awesome unit, um, but I don't think that this one performance-wise justifies its retail price, unfortunately. Um, so in this case, just was really surprised. I did not think that the cheapest unit here would actually be the highest performing one. So the clear winner for me is the Dust Deputy.